Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever and wherever you're watching or listening. This is the Osmo NHL DFS Pick Show, and I am your host, Michael Clifford, aka Slim Cliffy. We have made it. This is, well, it's not technically the final day of the regular season. There's a makeup game coming up this Sunday, but it is the last big slate of the NHL regular season. It's been almost seven months long at this point, quite the journey. Um, Lots to get through today. Before we get through all that, uh, let's talk about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the sponsor for the show, and thank you to them for sponsoring us. Prize Picks is a daily prop based contest. Uh, you, if you want to join Prize Picks, just use the promo code AWESEMO, A W E A W E S E M O, for a $100 first match bonus. There are no sh sharks, there are no optimizers, there is no mass entry. It's a five-player lineup that can net up to 10 times your entry fee. And if you use your knowledge across multiple sports, you can do that as well for cross-sport entries. Just download the app in the App Store or on Google Play or just go right on over to prizepicks.com. Use our free player props tool to help you make the best selections. That is available over at oddshopper.com. It is a free service provided here by Osmo. Uh, to help you with all your prop selections. Uh, and if you want to, you can get one month free of Osmo Plus Platinum when you sign up using the link in the description of this video and make a deposit at Prize Picks. You will receive an email within 24 to 48 hours, uh, after which you can redeem your free month of Osmo Plus Platinum. We're going to give you guys a couple prize picks more towards the end of the show, but let's jump into some DFS stuff right away. Obviously, it's a massive slate here tonight. There's 15 games, 30 teams. Uh, one thing to note is, obviously, it's the last game of the regular season, so a lot of playoff teams are going to be resting players. The problem with that is that there's uh, 18 teams that played last night. 16 of those are playing again here tonight. So over half the slate is on a back-to-back. -back. And what that means is that at the time of this recording, which is about 2.30 uh, Eastern, we just don't have information on most of the lineups that are out there because all those teams on back-to-backs, they won't have morning skates today. The coach doesn't talk uh, until about, you know, five, six o'clock Eastern or talk to the media where he'll provide uh, updates on players that might be injured, players that might be rested, uh, what certain lineup combinations might be. So there, uh, there is a lot to go through. I'm just going to talk about some players that are, are definitely out very, very quickly. Uh, for Toronto, uh, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, John Tavares, Michael Bunting, all out of the lineup. Uh, Florida played last night uh, and rested some guys, uh, but they can't rest everybody. So I suspect maybe the players that rested last night uh, play in the season finale here tonight. You know, Alexander Barkov, Jonathan Huberto, um, Mackenzie Wiegar, and then maybe you see guys like Sam Reinhardt or Sam Bennett uh, sit out here tonight. Uh, like I said, we'll find out. Uh, a little bit later on today when the Florida coach talks to the media. Uh, Patrick Laine, he's injured. He's out. Uh, Zach Wierenski also out for Columbus, and they also played last night. Uh, Matt Zuccarello is still out for Minnesota. Uh, Edmonton is uh, resting both Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl uh, with Darnell Nurse still injured, and he's out. Colorado played last night. Um, we haven't heard anything from them yet that I've seen. Uh, but I suspect they're going to have some players rested as well. They've got nothing left to play for. Um, you know, no sense playing those guys on a back-to-back -back and risk further injury heading into the playoffs when you're one of the true cup contenders. Uh, on the Rangers side of things, a lot of the regulars are going to be back. Mika Zibanejad will be back. Chris Kreider will be back, which means their top line, including Frank Vetrano, should be reunited. Um, Adam Fox will be back in on the blue line, but they're still going to sit Artemi Panarin and Andrew Kopp. So, um, what that second line might look like with Ryan Strom, we'll see. Um, but I suspect it'd be something like Strom, Gauthier, and Barclay Goodrow, and then, of course, the kid line of Hito, Lafreniere, and Kako. That is just a taste of some of the players that are out tonight, some of the players that we know. And, of course, there are teams that still have uh, things to play for, you know, uh, home ice, uh, playoff seating, you know, Washington and Pittsburgh, Boston and Tampa, Minnesota, St. Louis, Nashville and Dallas, they all have – uh, seating to play for, um, you know, depending where you want to play, whether you want to get home ice, who might start, who might rest. Uh, we'll see about that. But that's just a quick wraparound. Let's get through some of our picks. Obviously, with all those centers out, I'm going to show you guys our uh, 
our uh, our um, projections right now are number one because our number one projected player, number two, number three, number four at the center position on DraftKings are all going to be out tonight. That leaves Tage Thompson, JT Miller, and possibly Sidney Crosby as the top three centers left on this slate. Um, Tage Thompson uh, is a guy that I do like here tonight. Chicago is in town. Chicago's uh, penalty kill has really been poor over the last month. The line with Victor Olofsson there instead of Alex Tuck hasn't been necessarily as good at 5-on-5, five five, but I think they can make it up on the power play. So I do like Tage Thompson and that top Buffalo line here tonight. Uh, JT Miller has actually played well on that top line with Connor Garland um, and Alex Chase on. So, you know, if you, if you want to use uh, Vancouver here tonight, um, as they head into uh, as they head into Edmonton, you know, Edmonton resting those players again, uh, Edmonton's power penalty kill, not specifically great. Uh, Vancouver's power play has typically been very good. So uh, JT Miller, one of the more expensive centers I liked here tonight. Uh, a guy that might be a little bit higher owned is Josh Norris uh, from Ottawa. Obviously, the Ottawa Senators don't have anything to play for, but they're going into Philly. And the Philadelphia Flyers have had some serious problems uh, of their own. Uh, it's just even on a 15-game slate, we might see him you know, approach that double digit ownership mark, not quite get there, but might approach it. And that's, you know, that's kind of significant uh, on a slate this big with this many teams uh, looking more towards the middle of, of the pricing pack. Uh, Kevin Hayes from Philadelphia, he projects exceptionally well uh, for us here today. I'll bring up our center projections here again. Uh, you see Kevin Hayes right here, uh, somewhere around the top 20, uh, one of the top values along with Sam Bennett from Florida, but we don't know if Sam Bennett's going to be playing again. We'll find out from Florida here in a few hours. Uh, Kevin Hayes is going to be on the top line with Travis Konechny. And those two actually have played reasonably well together. At least they've been generating a lot of offense. So for his price, uh, do not mind Kevin Hayes here tonight. The last mid-range center I'll talk about is Tim Stutzla. Uh, obviously, again, from Ottawa, getting some secondary power play time. He's been playing uh, some heavy minutes of late as well. Um, his line is very high event. So don't mind Tim Stutzla from Ottawa going into Philadelphia here tonight. Um, for some cheaper centers, uh, Jesper Bockvist from New Jersey. Uh, Detroit is just a really, really bad team. Um, so I don't mind Jesper Bockvist for fairly cheap over on DraftKings, $2,600. He's on the top power play unit, it appears. So don't mind Bockvist if you need a punt center. P is Suter. From Detroit on the other side. He's playing with Jacob Vrana. Vrana's been playing very well since he returned, at least scoring a lot of goals. And Suter's been playing, you know, relative, you know, pretty consistently 18 to 20 minutes without Dylan Larkin in the lineup. So I don't mind Pia Suter here tonight. Uh, he's very cheap at uh 3.3k over on DraftKings. Finally, uh Ryan O'Reilly seems like a mispricing on DraftKings. He's gonna get David Perron back on his line here tonight. St. Louis can still play for home ice. Uh, so Ryan O'Reilly, 3,400 on DraftKings. He's a lot more expensive on FanDuel, 5,800. So it's a bit more of a question there, but definitely Ryan O'Reilly should be in the mix. All right, let's get to some wingers here. Uh, Timo Meyer is the guy that jumped out uh, immediately uh, for me here on this slate. Um, you know, San Jose obviously doesn't have a lot to play for, but that top line um, has been just fine tonight. Depending who sits tonight, um, again, I'll show you our wingers. Uh, Philip Forsberg uh, at the top uh, over on DraftKings, but, you know, he might be sitting tonight. Uh, Sam Reinhart might be sitting tonight. Kanan Debrinkat obviously won't be, but they are very, very expensive. David Pasternak, we have to see if Boston's going to be sitting some players. Boston did call up uh, three forwards from the HL, so Pasternak might be getting a night off here tonight. So Timo Meyer, 6,300 over on DraftKings. A lot more expensive on FanDuel, but a very, very good value on DraftKings. Uh, Jake Gensel, just below Timo Meyer. More expensive, but Pittsburgh definitely has something to play for here tonight. Uh, they uh, will either end up facing the New York Rangers or uh, the Florida Panthers, depending on what happens here tonight. Uh, you know, they could end up, you know, Florida would be their first round matchup and then the winner of the Tampa Toronto series in the second round. That's a pretty brutal stretch. So uh, I would suspect a good game out of them here tonight, but uh, we'll see what the lineup looks like at warm up. And finally, Kyle Connor. I uh, do want to mention him because, again, Calgary is a team that has nothing to play for tonight. They played last night. Maybe they sit a bunch of regulars here tonight. Uh, and if they do that, uh, Kyle Connor could have himself a good night at home. 
Uh, moving over uh, to uh, the more mid mid range price guys, uh, Brady Kachuk, 5.8K on DraftKings, 6.9 on FanDuel, 38 shots in his last 10 games. He's been basically playing 18 to 22 minutes a night over his last few games. Um, whether he gets that tonight, I mean, we'll see. It's the last game of the season, but it is a very, very good matchup for the Ottawa Senators going into Philadelphia, or at least a, a good matchup, we'll say. Uh, on the other side of that game, Travis Konechny, 21 shots in his last five games, playing about 19 minutes a game. Uh, and I said earlier uh, how well, well, not how well, but well enough that him and uh, Kevin Hayes have been playing together. Um, you know, home game, uh, Ottawa, not really a great team defensively in their own right. Uh, don't mind Travis Konechny, 4.9K on DraftKings, 5,100 on FanDuel, very reasonable. And finally, Brock Besser from Vancouver. I mentioned JT Miller a little bit earlier uh, and the Edmonton Oilers so-so uh, uh, penalty kill. Um, you know, they're going to be missing their top two centers. Obviously, Darnell Nurse is still out. So that's a big hit to that team. Uh, Brock Besser, very reasonably, pr reasonably priced. 4.6K on DraftKings, 5.8 on FanDuel. He's been having some inconsistent ice time, but it's the top power play minutes that matter the most here. Don't mind Brock Besser. And for cheaper wingers, Alex Lafreniere, Mike Hoffman, Dominic Kubelik. Uh, none of them really playing uh, super heavy minutes. Uh, Hoffman has seen close to 19 at times in those last 10 games. Um, but, you know, uh, Lafreniere and Hoffman are both playing on the top power play units for their teams here tonight. And as far as Lafreniere goes, uh, you know, the Rangers are getting back Sabanajad. They're getting back Kreider. They're getting back Fox. So that those are all the big pieces of their power play here. And it remains to be seen if uh, Washington is going to be resting any people here tonight uh, besides, you know, Alex Ovechkin. He may not be playing either. And obviously, uh, Dominic Kubelik, uh, just going up against that Buffalo team, the depth hasn't been uh, great. They've been fine, but the goaltending has been awful, especially on DraftKings, where he was only 2.6K. Don't mind Dominic Kubelik as a super cheap one off here tonight. Going to the blue line, uh, Roman Yossi. <laughs> What am I supposed to say here? Assuming he's in the lineup tonight, that's kind of the problem here is uh, Nashville plays at 1030 Eastern. It's the very, very last game of the slate. Um, they do still uh, have something to play for, but it's a matter of whether you want to play Colorado or Calgary. We'll see how much they want to put into that. But, you know, facing Arizona, Arizona is arguably the worst defensive team over the last month or so, allowing north, you know, north of four goals per game or per 60 minutes of five on five. Just real, real bad. So uh, Roman Yossi leads the list, but the two guys behind him for me for top end defensemen are Dougie Hamilton and Chris Letang. Now Chris Letang would be assuming that all the Pittsburgh Penguins regulars play Crosby, Gensel, and those guys, uh, assuming they're all in 6.4 K on DraftKings, 6.4 K on FanDuel. He's played 24 plus in four of his last five games. Uh, the one he didn't was, was a three -point. Columbus is on a back-to-back -back starting the backup goalie or a, technically a third string goalie um I like Latang here tonight uh Dougie Hamilton is more of a FanDuel special he's only 5.8k over on FanDuel I think it's kind of deserved but uh they're facing uh Detroit here tonight and Detroit has one of the worst penalty kills in the league over the last five weeks near the bottom of the league uh so don't mind Dougie Hamilton kind of expensive on DraftKings I've Probably just uh, move up and pay for Roman Yossi, uh, but on FanDuel, certainly playable at 5,800. On the blue line, for cheaper guys, uh, Brandon Montour was running the top power play for Florida. We don't know if he's going to sit tonight. Uh, we'll find out, you know, here in a few hours. But if he's playing again and Weigar and all those guys are still, you know, Montour playing on the top power play unit with hopefully Barkoff and Huberto back in the lineup could be a very nice play. 3.6K on DraftKings, 4.0 on FanDuel. Thomas Shabbat, a FanDuel special. I think it's a mispricing. He's $3,500 on FanDuel. Um, he's going to have very high ownership, I imagine, north of 20%. We haven't projected for at the moment. So Thomas Shabbat, uh, definitely a FanDuel special. Alex Goligoski, uh, he's been running the top power play unit for Minnesota with Jared Spurgeon on the shelf, 3.4K on DraftKings, 3.7 on FanDuel. Minnesota still has something to play for. Uh, that's home ice against St. Louis. Colorado, I imagine, is going to be resting a bunch of regulars, so this could be a good night to get a cheap Alex Goligoski in your lineup. Uh, in goal, Jake Ottinger, 7.7K on both sites. He's going to be starting for Dallas at home against a pretty bad Anaheim team. As mentioned, Dallas and Nashville still jockeying for position there, so 
Don't mind Ottinger here tonight. Uh, Connor Hellebuck, we'll see if we get any updates about the Calgary lineup, but, you know, I suspect you could see Johnny Goodrow, Elias Lindholm, and, you know, maybe Michael Backlund sit here tonight. Certainly takes a bite out of their offensive potential, and Hellebuck is all the way down to 7,100 on both sides. Very cheap home goalie here tonight. And finally, Ilya Sorokin, 6,900 on DraftKings, uh, 7.3K on FanDuel. This is another one where we'll see who the Tampa Bay Lightning play because they were another team that played last night. So we could see Kucherov and Point and Stamkos and all those guys uh, rest here tonight. So don't mind Sorokin, especially on DraftKings where he's 6,900. He's been one of the best goalies in the league this year. It's just his team has let him down uh, in, you know, in the goal scoring department for most of the season. So uh, don't mind Sorokin at 6,900. For the stacks, uh, we have Dallas 1 coming in under 5%. Uh, they are their whole lineup is going to be playing tonight, except for John Klingberg. Miro Haskinen should take that top power play time. But, you know, Robertson hints Pavelski reasonably priced, play all the important minutes together. Big 3.4 total at home like them. Uh, Florida one, assuming Barkov is back in, I think the top line might be Barkov or Hagee and Mammon, especially over on DraftKings where Verhage and Mammon are both under $3,000. That is a very cheap top line stack here tonight. Uh, Pittsburgh is good, should be a higher own stack, assuming all those guys are in. Uh, but again, Columbus back to back, backup goalie, missing some important players. We're rent game uh, especially like Pittsburgh one. New Jersey one. Um, I mentioned Jesper Bogfist as a cheaper center a little bit earlier. Um, he's playing with Jesper Bratt and Alexander Holtz. Holtz is probably their top prospect. Definitely uh, should be a very good goal scorer. All playing, expected to play the power play together. Uh, Detroit has a very bad penalty kill. They're still missing Dylan Larkin and, and all those guys. So uh, don't mind Jersey Devils top line as a cheap stack here tonight. And the last one I'll look at is Minnesota too. Uh, Goodrow and Boldy uh, and Kevin Fiala. Uh, Fiala has moved to the top power play unit. Obviously him and Erickson Eck there with Zuccarello out. So they're on the top power play unit. Uh, Colorado, like I said, probably will be resting some players here tonight. Minnesota definitely wants Home, and home ice against St. Louis, so expect a good game out of them. Don't mind Minnesota, too, here. They've been absolutely dynamite. 3.6 expected goals generated in the month of April. I like them as a 1% owned line here tonight. All right, uh, those two prize picks I talked about earlier. Dylan Strom, over one and a half shots. We like that. He's projected for 2.3 by our odd shopper with an expected win percentage of 69%. So Dylan Strom, over one and a half shots. And Matthew Barzal, over one and a half shots. We haven't projected for 2.4 with an expected win percentage of 70%. So those are your prize picks. Those were your DFS picks. I got to get out of here because this is running way too long already. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in uh, during the regular season. We, Josh and I really, really enjoyed doing these shows. Uh, we will be back uh, for the start of the playoffs. So until then, have a good weekend and good luck tonight, everybody.